Hello, I'm Larry Stevens, biographer of the American poet Walter Griffin. This is the first in a series of YouTube videos featuring Walter reading many of his poems. Walter Griffin's poems have appeared in more than 400 literary journals and magazines including Harper's, The Atlantic, The Paris Review, Poetry, The Southern Review, The Oxford American, and The New Yorker. Walter is the former master poet in residence for the Georgia Council for the Arts and Humanities. I've never believed in long talky prefaces for poems and uh, I just have always felt that the poem should stand on its own two legs. Most of these poems in this series for YouTube are from my current book, Nights of Noise and Light. My poems have primarily to do with homesickness of the heart and the isolation and loneliness of the human spirit. At the All Night Cafeteria the dark inside the movie theater is thinning and I am left with my eyes filling with snow. There are acres of paved over parking lots where I once lived. Nothing grows there. Black and white photographs pressed inside my wallet, eager to get out to become ghosts. I take them out on the counter, decide which ones to have dinner with, their cracked and folded smiles lie amid the crumbs, and I am drunk with companionship among the coffee stains of others. I crawl inside the circled edges and hold their faded white hands. Heritage I know your bones, your fetal stretch inside of me. We swim together where mirrors meet and even the fish are cold. Last night I dreamed of holding your hand while we drowned, afraid of arms that touch and eyes that meet. My father of the dark-edged photograph, we drift in the same wreckage. I hold myself and imagine your eyes. Making up the dead. The lady who cut my hair rushed back from the funeral parlor where she gave Ms. Dobbs her last shampoo and cut. I felt the snips around my ears as she talked the click of her false teeth close to my head. I was almost afraid to ask, do they ever twitch or expel gas? No, she said, I just cut their hair the way I always did, and if they are too white, I apply a little pancake makeup. The family likes that. Some have said I make them look like movie stars. Corpses are easy to quaff and I don't have to worry about my breath. The roses around her casket smell so good I almost forgot where I was. And Lord, for the first time on this earth, poor Miss Dobbs was quiet. The same cold scissors with a scent of roses snipped and cut around my face, pale in the mirror beneath brows she had already tinted, my heart skipping a beat now and then. Paris, 1955 Like a Michael Rennie wannabe strolling by the bookstalls of the Seine, trench-coated and long cigarette holder in my hand, I walked by the fountain in Place de la Pigalle, humming Piaf's so why must I see the ribbon she wore, the glow on his face when I close the door? Later that evening inside Harry's New York bar, I took off my beret and sat down, crew cut and all, wondering where I could sell a carton of Luckies or exchange some funny money for Franks. Dog tagged, still beardless, and still 17.
I had uh, an Aunt Ida in real life. She was, a, she was a 30 year English teacher and loved the works of Lord Byron. She read his works to me when I was a kid until Lord Byron was literally coming, he was coming out of my ears and I guess partly because of that, I've never really been a huge fan of Lord Byron. And my next poem is appropriately entitled, Aunt Ida and Lord Byron. She read his lines with reverence. One could almost hear his lame foot dragging across the floor. How unfamiliar Texas must have been behind the dust-piled windows. The specter dissolved in yellow light as she slowly closed the book. Her breath seemed caught in the kindling fire, while I, pulling my toes through my socks, longed for summer and the sharp blades of grass that cut red ribbons on my knees.